When we asked him why he chooses to spend his summers in Provincetown rather than someplace else, Tony Kirshner said, Mark and I have been coming to P-Town every summer for the past 11 years. We choose P-Town because it's the only place on earth on any given night you can walk down the street, run into at least three or four playwrights or stage directors you like. Dina Martina, one or two 70-year-old guys with tattooed heads, lugger nuts on their nipples, your lesbian therapist with her children, <laughs> your cardiologist with his husband and their children, and God knows, dogs of every variety. <laughs> one or two novelists and poets you like. Then you have John Waters and First Lady Michelle Obama, or at least some guy who, like most of us, really wishes she was first lady. <laughs> but, unlike most of us, this guy's done something about it. <laughs> All the while, you're avoiding eye contact with some formerly right-wing, currently ideology, indeterminate, professional, political blogger. We don't like that. And maybe, if you're lu lucky, the real good thing of running, being run over by a hot guy on a bike. <laughs> All in one night. Why the hell would anybody else want to go anyplace? <laughs> that, that's it. It's my pleasure to present the award this evening to Tony. Born in 1956, don't you love it when they put the age in? Oh. <laughs> Next to the line, you look so good for your age. <laughs> Tony Kirshner is best known for his Pulitzer Prize and his Tony Award winning play, Angels in America. A seven hour. A seven hour epic about the AIDS epidemic during the Reagan New York era, which was later adapted into a mini series for film. Tony wrote the screenplay for director Mike Nichols winning an Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing, etc. His other plays include Caroline or Change, The Intellectual Homosexual Guide to Capitalism, Socialism, with a key to the scriptures. Helps me bring, <laughs> being Irish Catholic, we love that one. <laughs> Homebody Cabal and A Bright Room Called Day. In, nine, in 2005, Tony co-wrote the screenplay for Steven Spielberg's Munich which he received Oscar and Golden Globe awards, or nominations. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting silly. He also wrote the screenplay for Spielberg's up-and-coming motion picture, Lincoln, starring Daniel Day-Lewis and due for release later this year. The film is based upon historian Dor Doris, Con Doris Kearns Goodwin's book. Tony's husband, and himself, Mark ha Harris, live in Manhattan and spend time in Provincetown in the summer. In April 2003, their commitment ceremony was the first same-sex commitment ceremony to be featured in the, quote, vows column of the New York Times. <laughs> and it's lasted. Um, in 2008, they were legally married in Provincetown. We are so proud to have Tony Krishna count Provincetown among his favorite places, and we are thrilled to present him with our Summer Celebration Award. Tony. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> my husband Mark and I have been coming to Provincetown every summer in August for more than a decade. Always in August, we're not psychotherapists, but I've been in psychotherapy so long, I've adapted many of the habits of psychotherapists, including hypersensitivity, emotion domination, and vacationing in August. <laughs> P-Town is the only place other than the Upper West Side of Manhattan where we both feel at home. So we're grateful to you for giving us a reason to come up, not to mention a free place to stay in July, and better yet, during Bear Week. P-Town... <laughs> P-Town usually makes me feel on the endomorphic end of the gay body thing. Turns out, 
having spent a week here during Bear Week, I'm like close to average. I can get a muffin with my morning latte at Joe's and eat the whole thing, not just the top. And order whole milk instead of skim for the latte, and I don't have to punish myself for any of it. I'm coming back for Bear Week next year, award or no award, and I'm leaving my Weight Watchers record book at home and my shaving razor, and I'm packing my wrestling singlet. It's um, particularly challenging for me not to overeat in Provincetown, because for me, Provincetown, as an actual place and as an ideal, is inseparable from its riders and from riding. And riders and riding make me nervous, and when I'm nervous, I overeat. Eugene O'Neill, Tennessee Williams, Robert Duncan, Carson McCullers, Norman Mailer, Mary Oliver, Mark Doty. The place is crawling with riders and the ghosts of riders, and combined with the fudge and the ice cream and the lobster rolls, <laughs> And relish, well, you get the point. By the way, there's a new Mexican restaurant, El Mundo. Fantastic. I highly recommend the goat cheese and rock shrimp burrito. So I frequently gain weight here, especially if I'm also trying to write, which I always am. And it's much worse when I'm not merely trying to write, but I'm actually writing. When I'm on my way down Commercial Street, heading to the library with my laptop and my notebooks and my best intentions. And before I get there, first I pass by Michael Cunningham and then the pink cupcake place. And how come Michael, and in fact nearly all the Provincetown writers I've mentioned are so thin? John Waters is thin. I go up and down, but I've never been thin really, so does this mean that I'm not and never will be a Provincetown writer? And I just, you know, a tourist who happens to write. It, it can't be said that there's a Provincetown school of writing. It'd be hard to locate an aesthetic principle under which Norman Mailer, Mark Doty, and John Waters could comfortably shelter and work. But the place itself attracts a certain kind of writer with appetites and aspirations for beauty, insatiable curiosity, habituates of the outermost of the beached margin, happy among paradoxes, distrustful of purity and orthodoxy, serious enough about art's indirect powers, and hopeful enough about justice and community and the future to make art that's unapologetically engaged with what's progressive in the world. The writer who seems to me best embodies and inhabits actual and imaginational Provincetown is Stanley Kunitz, whose work I revere. When I wrote the first part of Angels in America in 1989, I used as the epigraph lines from Stanley's poem, The Testing Tree, in a murderous time, the heart breaks and breaks and lives by breaking. After the play was published, a friend of Stanley's wrote to me informing me that Stanley was slightly annoyed that I hadn't asked his permission to use the lines. When I say that I revere his work, I mean it. I really do. I really did back then. It simply hadn't occurred to me that someone I revered would notice my play from the Olympian Heights my reverence had assigned him, much less that a great poet would care about some playwright using a couple of his lines, great poets having, having more important things to think about. I wrote to Stanley, introducing myself, apologizing for the unauthorized use I'd made of his poetry, explaining that I'm enormously intimidated by poets I admire, poetry being, in my opinion, the most difficult, demanding, and most important of all the language-based arts. Stanley wrote back, accepting my offer of free tickets as payment for the epigraph. <laughs> as far as my being intimidated was concerned, Stanley replied, Mr. Kushner, I am 89 years old. Not even dogs and cats are intimidated by me. <laughs> Nothing makes this honor sweeter than the connection it forges with an organization Stanley Kunitz helped found and with which he was so extensively associated. I learned about the extent of the association yesterday when Margaret Murphy was showing me around, and I learned something else. After telling me how Falk works, the generous and vital service it provides to writers and artists, I mean to some writers and artists, writers and artists who aren't as freaked out by the presence of other writers and artists as I am, and seriously, <laughs> seven months in Provincetown in the winter, surely, along with the great art that's produced here, there's also psychosis and cannibalism that <laughs> has to be swept under the rugs every spring. Anyway, I also learned that the office part of Falk used to be a lumberyard. Any lingering doubts I had about my suitability for this award were erased. My father, <laughs> William Kushner, who died four months ago, was a terrific clarinetist and a splendid conductor, another artist whose work I'm profoundly indebted to and whose memory I revere. He was a superb musician, but he kept his family housed, clothed, educated, and fed, in my case, perhaps too well fed, by means of a lumberyard he owned and operated in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So this evening, 
this affiliation and this honor, in some sense, completes a circle. Just as Bear Week has made me feel thinner and <laughs> practically hairless, this, uh, this honor has made me feel more like a Provincetown writer, a Provincetown artist. And I thank you for that, for making me feel even more that when I'm in Provincetown, I'm home. Thank you. You are